Hey everyone, it's Colt. Today we're talking about CSS media queries and responsive design. We'll be making a little project together throughout this video. You can see it in front of you right now. Uh, it is a <laughs> fictional cactus startup. I don't know what you actually purchase from them or what they do, but I just like this image. So it starts as a full screen heading image here uh, with some text centered. And as I resize, you can see that that image is going to take up less space. And then eventually it halves the space that it takes up just so it looks a little bit better on mobile and uh, tablet sizes instead of having to scroll through a massive image to even see the content versus on a desktop that's a little bit nicer. Then here we've got two side-by-side -side cards um, and as I resize this you'll see that they stack vertically on top of one another. There's a border that's on the bottom here and as I resize to a larger screen size you'll see that border is on the left side. Uh, just as a quick demo here's what it looks like on an iPhone. Here's a Pixel 2 so that's what we'll be building in this video. Uh, there's also a little exercise at the end if you'd like to try it. And before we get started, just a couple little things to take care of. First of all, if any of you are considering changing careers, trying to become a software engineer, and you'd like to take the next step, take a look at my online bootcamp. It's a self-paced bootcamp. It comes with a job guarantee. You're assigned a one-on-one -on -one mentor, a senior engineer at a big tech company who meets with you every week, who reviews your code, you have mock interviews. Job guarantee, if you don't get a job, you don't pay anything take a look at the link in the description and for a limited time I'm offering a $500 scholarship to any of my YouTube subscribers in celebration of me hitting 100,000 subscribers so that's the first thing now the second thing is that this video uses a bit of Flexbox to help lay out the content to put these two cards in a row and then to stack them uh, to center this content vertically and horizontally if you're not at all familiar with Flexbox take a look at the is it the last video I put out or two videos ago I put out a video on Flexbox take a look at that uh, otherwise that's pretty much it Okay, enough of this stuff up front. Let's get started. Here we go, talking about media queries and responsive design. So what is responsive design? Why don't we actually start with an example of a website that is not responsive? These days, it takes a little bit of work to find them. Uh, this is an example made deliberately to demonstrate the problems of non-responsive websites. So back in the day, I don't know how long ago, but before my time as a web developer, if you were making a website, what you would do is make a website for computers. For a typical desktop, there weren't tons of different screen sizes for the most part. They're all pretty much the same or similar enough. We didn't have tablets, we didn't have mobile devices that were you know, browsing the web. But then as browsers became a thing for mobile phones and iPhones, Android devices had browsers built in, there was a problem. Websites built for computers, typical laptops or desktop monitors, would look horrible on a mobile device. Here's an example of that. This is a web page that is not responsive, which means it does not respond to the size of the screen. So as I resize my screen here, this is not even a mobile size, but maybe this is a super large uh, phone. But if I went to an actual mobile size, first of all, I'm missing the content. I have to scroll around uh, and it just looks bad. This image takes up way too much space. The heading is cut off. I can't even view the nav bar. And if I were to actually view this on a mobile size, which I can do using Chrome, I can select this little button there um, and go to, how about, sure, a Gal Galaxy S5. This is what the content looks like. It's a lot of scrolling around, very hard to find things, and it's just a bad experience. So at one point, what was very common was to make a completely separate uh, website just for phones or a separate part of your website uh, I don't know if any of you remember this, you would often go to M, so like reddit.com and then m.reddit.com for mobile, or maybe it was reddit.m or whatever it was. There was an M for mobile. Uh, that was just a pattern that was common. But nowadays in CSS, we have the ability to write code, to write CSS styles that only apply at certain screen sizes. So here's an example. This is 538. Uh, as I resize, you'll see that things move around. So text changes, padding and margin changes, and then things are reordered or things suddenly go from being uh, in a column right here and sharing space. These three columns here are sharing space horizontally across the screen to now a single column layout. Or here's another example. We've got the verge, lots of content in a grid here, lots of stuff that is going to change and move around as I resize. You'll see there, Things just shifted. We had three elements going across. Now we have two going across. And then eventually we get to this layout, which is much more mobile friendly. It's a much better experience for users on phones, except for these massive obnoxious ads that you have to scroll through. Ooh, undefined. That's not good. Anyway, 
So responsive design is the idea of having a single website that is able to respond to the screen that it's on or the size of the screen that it's on or the device type. There are different things that we can respond to. It's not just the number of pixels in a screen or not just the width. It could be the height. It, it could also be whether uh, the device is in landscape or in, uh, what's the other one, portrait orientation, how you're holding your phone or your tablet. So the way that we do all of this is by writing what are called media queries. Media queries in CSS are ways to conditionally apply styles based off of certain properties of the device. So the most common ones are going to be based off of the width of the screen, the height of the screen, although height's not that common, or the orientation. But we also have things like aspect ratio or the light level, which I don't think this is implemented right now, but this will be kind of cool. We could write some styles that apply depending on the ambient light level of the environment. So I assume it uses your device's camera or sensors, or I don't know how. It doesn't work in browsers these days. Uh, it's in media queries level five, which most browsers don't implement. But that will be interesting to be able to write different styles, maybe to reduce glare or easier to read in a glary environment if it's super sunny. We've got the resolution, so we can write some styles based off of the resolution. But most commonly, what we're going to target are the dimensions of the screen, specifically the width. So the way that a media query works is that we write at media, a space, and then some media feature that we're trying to write styles based upon. So in this case, max width at, wow, 12,450 pixels. It's a very large screen there. Um, so max width, and then inside of curly braces, we can add styles. And whatever we put in here will apply on any screen size up to 12,450, 12,450 pixels. So we also have min width, and those are the most common. Uh, you'll also see this media screen, and that's referring to whether the device itself has a screen or if it's a screen device or if you're targeting uh, printers because you can also write styles that apply for print. So when your web page is printed out, you might want things to look different. You might want to remove all colorful images or you might want to remove all images period, or you might want to remove all ads or whatever it is, you can write different styles based off of the media. So I've got a code pen over here. You can find a link uh, in the description, although there's nothing really to look at right now. Uh, if you want to follow along, I highly recommend it. I've got an H1 and I'm going to start by making this H1 very large. We can ignore this stuff for now. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to make this H1 have a font size of maybe 10 rems. Let's see how large that is. Okay, pretty good size. And I'm going to give it a background color, background color of, maybe I'll just do color, regular old color. Let's go with the color of indigo. Okay. So as I resize my screen, which I'm not really resizing the screen, but the window, this is not <laughs> responsive, even though it's very simple, it's not responsive and I'm cutting off that content. So maybe what I want to do is at some screen size here, I don't know if you can see this, but on code pen, as I resize, there's a number of pixels right there. So at some size, I want to make this H1 smaller. What would look good here? Maybe eight rims or maybe even I'll just go to five rims or something like that. And I'll set text align to center just to make it look slightly nicer. Yeah, so we're not gonna have a device most likely that's 180 pixels wide. So most of the time we're, we're designing for mobile devices and we'll talk about those sizes in a bit. Um, so right now it's not responsive really. It's just one web page in one size and maybe it looks fine on larger screens. But what I'd like to do is have it be 10 rems and change to five rems on a smaller screen. So the way I write a media query is at media. And then typically you'll see this screen and, and then a min width or a max width. So if I wanna apply styles for something below 500 pixels, if that's my example, I would say max width colon 500 pixels. And then I write my selectors and my properties inside of this media query. So I'll select all H1s and I'll start by just changing the color. How about uh, we go to, how about green? Okay, so what this is saying is I would like to make all H1s green when we're working with a screen, so not for print. You don't have to have this, but it's a good idea too. And only when the screen is 500 pixels or below, a maximum of 500 pixels wide do this. So let's resize. There we go. 
500 pixels is right somewhere about there. I know that's 480. Yeah, it's right about there. So that's where it's changing. And then we go to indigo. And I could resize the text. I'll do that. Font size will be 5 rems for that H1. Okay. It's kind of a big jump, but that's fine. Another option would be to use a percentage. Instead of having a, a breakpoint at 500 pixels where things completely shift, maybe I want my text just to scale the entire way. So I could use a unit that scales with the, the width of the screen. I could do something like, uh, not that I do this very often, but 10 view width, 10% of the view width. And you'll see that as this grows, that gets larger and larger. But then it gets a little bit tiny there before we hit that breakpoint. So there are different strategies, but for now we're just focusing on media queries. So we could add in another breakpoint with another media query. This time, uh, let's go from maybe 500 up until when we get to 1000 pixels, maybe 800 pixels. So if I'm saying max width of 800 and I give it a different color, let's just do color for now, not worry about font size. Let's go with uh, cyan. Okay. So what I've now said is I want the default color, let's just focus on color, to be indigo. But actually, I want the color from 0 to 500 pixels to be green. Oh wait, I want the color from 0 to 800 pixels to be cyan. So what color is it going to be as I shrink it down? It's cyan. And that's because of the order I wrote these media queries in. This one just says anything below 800 pixels, we should have an H1 be cyan. So this one is completely ignored. So I could copy that and just move it down below. And now this should work and we get green because we're saying anything from 0 to 800 is cyan. Oh, actually, from 0 to 500 is green. So now we have a range from 500 to 800 of cyan and then above 800 is going back to indigo. Now, the last thing I'll show you right now is that we have another way of writing these media queries where the order won't matter. Um, so I could combine two different dimensions, I could say between 500 and 800 pixels. So if I wanted to do that, I'll comment this one out here and rewrite it down here at media screen and, and then I'll say min width of 500 pixels and max width of 800 pixels. And then the same thing in here, maybe I'll go for a different color. Color will be orange red. Okay, so here I've specified between 500 and 800, make H1s have a color of orange red. But then here I've said from zero to 500, I want you to be green. So the order no longer matters because we're not overwriting what we had before. Previously, when I just said everything below 800 should be cyan, that was overwriting this but now it's not. So two different approaches. There's actually a newer syntax for media queries that it's not supported by most browsers yet, but it is nicer to be able to write this. It's part of media queries level four with less than or equal to 30 M's or 300 pixels or whatever it is. But for now, we've got to use this sort of syntax here. So the last thing I'd like to talk about are the common breakpoint sizes. If you are going to target different screen sizes or different device types, it's hard these days because there are so many different sizes of tablets and so many sizes of mobile phones. You've got those uh, super, I don't know, what are they, iPhone, I don't know. You've got the big iPhones and this, the iPhone Plus and the regular iPhone. You've got uh, tablets, regular tablets, uh, pretty slim ones, and then those really large tablets, iPad Pros. And the same thing for most other brands, not just Apple. Um, there are just lots of sizes. And then same thing for laptops. And then we've got extra large monitors. Uh, people have huge monitors that are 4K or 5K, I guess, these days. Maybe there's even higher. I, I don't keep up with that stuff. Um, so there's a lot of, of diversity of sizes. But in general, some common guidelines or some commonly used breakpoints are extra small devices are between 0 and 600 pixels. Small devices, which would be like a portrait tablet or a large phone, an iPhone Plus or something, would be 600 pixels up to 768 and then we've got medium devices, landscape tablets, up to 992 for laptops or some laptops, and then up to 1200 pixels and more would be large laptops and desktops. So again, this is not set in stone at all. 
These are just some common breakpoints you might see, but you do not have to use these. Um, and you don't really have to use breakpoints necessarily to make a website responsive. You can use units that scale for things and have your elements resize based off of the view width or the view height. But sometimes you need a pretty drastic change. It's not just about changing the font size, but maybe you need something uh, where something goes from a row to a column or something shows and hides depending on the screen size. So that's something else I could do. I could just say display none <laughs> for all H1s between 500 and 800 pixels. There's no H1 and then it comes back. Not the best design decision, but eh, you can do it. So now what we're going to do is work on implementing this simple portion of a website. It's really not a full website where we've got this big image taking up the entire 100% of the view height when you first load it and then you scroll down and we've got these two cards next to each other. And then as I resize, you'll see that the text changes in here and the image no longer takes up all that screen. So if you're on a mobile device, I think it's kind of annoying if you open up the website and you have to scroll immediately just to get past the heading. So we have that resize and also this text right here, that resizes, it's kind of hard to see, but it shrinks down. And most significantly, these two items, these two cards go vertically or they go into a column and they stack. So those are two pretty common patterns to have a, a row that turns into a column and then to have something that resizes, whether it's an image or a heading or to have a nav bar that stacks that goes from horizontal to vertical. So we're going to recreate that. Uh, there is a starter code pen in the link in the description where you can see all the code pens I'm using today where I give you the images and the text and some of the other styles that don't really matter. So we're going to be using Flexbox, uh, which I covered in a pretty thorough video. Uh, I think it's my most recent video earlier this week. If you're not familiar with Flexbox, you don't have to know it, but it will help you understand what we're actually doing, even though the focus is on media queries. So I'm going to begin by making this header here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just show you the markup. It's just a header with an H1 an H2 and a button. And I have some button styles already written just because I didn't want you to watch me type this stuff. It's a, I mean, I didn't want to type this box shadow. It's a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is start by giving the header itself a background image, this cactus image right there. After all, this is a, a cactus website. Sign up today for your free cactus. So in the CSS, I've actually included the URL. If you, if you are following along, you can just copy that cactus image URL. And then I'm going to select the header. So I'll just do that down here, header. And then I'm going to set the background image to be the URL instead of quotes from unsplash.com. And there's my header. Okay, it looks not great. So the next thing I'm going to do is set a height on my header, which is going to be 100% of the view height or the viewport height, so 100 VH. Now I have that image but it's not really showing me the portion of the image I want, right? I, I don't want to just see that grayish color. I want to see the cactuses and specifically cacti, cacti, right? Specifically what I want is to see the bottom of the cactus image. If you look at the entire image, this is the bottom and then the top of it just includes a lot of empty space. So I'm going to move things around a little bit using background position and background size. So background size allows me to specify how this image should cover or fit this background or this uh, header. I'm going to set it to cover and then I'm going to set background position to bottom. Whoops. All right. So there we go. I've got that background image. Now what I'm going to do is work on aligning this content so that it's all in the middle. So that's where Flexbox comes in. We've got an H1, H2 and a button and I've got my header, which is this entire thing. So I'm going to take this header and set display to flex. And then I'm going to set justify content to be center. And then align items to be center as well. Okay. Now what I want to do is set the flex direction. I want it to be a column, not a row, because right now they're sharing space in this row. I want them just to stack. So I'm going to go with flex direction column then I'll add some basic styles for the h1 in there I'm just gonna make it larger font size will be four ems or M's and I have a Google font in here 
called Montserrat. So I'm going to set the font family to Montserrat. Okay, um, here's a Google font up top. I put it in the CSS just so you could see the Google font is here. What's confusing is with uh, CodePen is that you can actually add a font in the settings, but then nobody can see it. So I put it there even though I generally don't like using imports in CSS. So that's uh, font size and font family. I'm going to set the font weight to be thinner, although I'm not sure if I like it thinner or not. Up to you. And I'm going to get rid of the margin on the bottom. Set that to zero. So now they stack a little bit nicer. Okay. Now, that's kind of it for this first bit. It's not responsive, so let's work on that. Let's make it resize that text so it's not so massive on smaller screen sizes. And also, I don't want this huge image as the first thing you see on a mobile device. So I'm going to figure out some breakpoint, which I think will be probably around, where does it start to look bad? I think on a, a tablet size, this is still quite a bit. So somewhere around maybe 500 pixels, maybe even 700 pixels, I'm going to resize this image. So I'm going to write my breakpoint or my media query at media. And then I can do screen just to be extra precise. And, and then I'll say max width of 700 pixels. At that point, I'll take the header and give it a new height. Instead of 100 VH, I think 50% of the view height. And there we go. We go from 100 VH to 50 VH right there. And then let's see what it looks like on a mobile device. If I open up the dev tools, if we look on an iPad, all right, so that looks pretty good. That's still 100 uh, VH. But then if we go to a large phone, ignoring the fact that our text is totally screwed up, that looks about the right height, how I'd like it. So now let's work on the text. So to do that, I'm going to resize this header, the font size of the header, because everything I used, all the units for H1, H2, and that button are based off of M's. So if I change the font size of that header, maybe to something like uh, 0.8 M's, so basically 80% of what it was. Now, as I shrink this down, it looks a little bit better there. If I refresh this, it's the same window or the same uh, code pen, just open in a different window. If I start to resize this, yeah, that looks decent there. And here it's okay. But then as soon as we get to 500 or so pixels, it's a little bit cramped. So I'm gonna do the same thing for 500 pixels. I'm gonna have another breakpoint. So at media screen and max width 500 pixels, I think I'm gonna go to maybe 0.5 Ms. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so here's what it looks like now on an iPhone. Ignore this massive uh, dog logo down here, but there we go. It looks pretty good there. We look at an iPad, it looks good. And then iPad Pro, yeah, that's fine enough. I mean, you can always tweak this. You can tweak this quite a bit. It looks like our button's not actually resizing all that well. So that's something we could play around with. But for now, I just wanna keep moving. And I think you've got the idea of, of kind of the flow here. You find some places where things are starting to look bad and then you can tweak them. Now, this is one approach where we're using breakpoints. Uh, these days, what's also kind of trendy is the concept of fluid typography where your text uh, using JavaScript or using things like SAS uh, is going to resize dynamically, but that's not something we're covering right now. So we're sticking with the breakpoint approach using media queries. All right, so that's pretty much it for the header. Now let's focus on this part down here where we have these side-by-side -side cards. And then as I resize, they stack. So first of all, if we just break this down in the HTML, I've already written out the markup. We've got a main element. And then inside, we've got a section I'm calling cards. It has an ID of cards. And then within that, there are two subsections, each a single card. Each one has an image, which is that logo here, or I guess an icon. I made those, by the way, very fancy. <laughs> I know they're not great, but uh, when I say I made them, I took a clip art and put it on a circle and exported it. And then there's an H3 in each one, a paragraph and an anchor tag. So those three things right there, plus that image. So what I want to happen is for them to go side by side, but I don't want them to just take up the entire width of the screen. I am boxing them in to a smaller container in the middle. I give it a different background color, a little bit of a, a border radius on the corners. So let's start with the basics. I'm gonna give my main element a background color. Back, 
ground color and the color I used is F6, F9, FC. No, I did not just read that off of my notes somewhere. F6, F9, FC. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's a light gray color. Okay, so there's my main. And then I have this section I'm calling cards. And what I'm going to do is give that a maximum width. If you notice what happens here, it never grows beyond this number of pixels. I think it was 14 or 1200 pixels. So I'm gonna give that card thing uh, a max width and I'll also give it a different background color. So the div or the section has an ID of cards. I'll give it a background color of white and then a max width of 1200 pixels. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see probably that background color, but here's my cards there uh, and it's not growing or shrinking at all. It does have a max width. But now what I'm gonna do is make it a flex box. And that's going to allow me to control the size of these cards and also uh, go from a row to a column layout. So I'm gonna say display, flex. All right, so now they're side by side. And I'm not gonna actually do anything else. I just want them to be side by side and the default flex direction is row. So I don't need to specify that. What I am going to do just quickly on the cards here is give a border radius of 1m and some margin top of 2m's just to add a little padding there or some margin there rather okay now i'd like to focus on the actual cards in there the sections themselves 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 um i want them to obviously resize those images are way too big so we could start with that you could say cards id image elements inside of that and i'll resize those images to have a width I think I'm just gonna hard code this at 66 pixels. So there's my image. And then what I'm going to do is add on some padding to my elements, the actual sections themselves. If you look at them, there's padding around them. So they're not just going all the way to the edge of each element or of each uh, section that the text is inside of. I'm gonna add padding. So I'm gonna select, I think just the uh, cards div or card section, any sections inside of that. Instead of saying all sections, only inside of cards. And then I'm gonna give them padding of four M's. Okay, so that's closer. Now we have some stylistic stuff to change in here, colors and all of that, but my content is not centered. And there's a couple different ways of centering all of this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just keep using Flexbox. So I'm gonna take my main element and set display to flex, but it's gonna be a flex row, which is not what I want. So I'm going to set flex direction to column. And then I'm going to center everything using align items center. And first of all, this is centered. But now my section here, my cards are centered in the middle of the screen. Although they are not stacking how we want them to. So it's not perfect. Uh, and before I go on to any of the stylistic stuff and changing the font size and the colors and all of that, let's get the cards to stack. And we have to figure out where we want that to happen. And just in looking at this, I think they start to get pretty cramped around, I don't know, I'd say uh, probably around 900 pixels or so because I'm going to increase the font size as well. Um, so I kind of already know the answer. <laughs> Otherwise, I would say they start looking cramped about there. But because I am going to increase the font size and make these H2s larger or H3s, I'm going to go with 900 pixels. So I'm just going to copy what we have already at media screen and max width of 900 pixels. What I need to do is select that cards div or cards section. I keep calling it a div. It's a, a section with the idea of cards. And instead of having it be a flex direction of row, I'm gonna have it go to column. So flex direction column. And we won't see that right away, but there we go. If I go past 900 pixels, go smaller, they stack. So side by side in a row, and now we go down to a column. So that's kind of it for the responsive portion, but to make this look a bit nicer, there are definite changes that I would make. So first of all, these H3s right here, inside of the cards, I'm gonna style them. Cards H3, I'll give them a color 
which I just happen to know is 24B47E. <laughs> 24B, I already forgot. Jeez, oh man. 24B47E. And I need my hash sign there. Okay, so that gives us that greenish color. I'm also going to set text transform to be uppercase just to make them all caps. And then I'm also going to set the font weight to be 400. Make them a tiny bit thinner. It's hard to notice, but they did change. And then I'm going to select these paragraphs and give them a larger line height. And those paragraphs are inside of cards. I'm just going to be more specific instead of all paragraphs. I'm going to give them a line height of 1.8 M's just to make them a bit larger. And then I'm going to give my paragraphs a sort of a light grayish color. So that color is, and I definitely haven't memorized this well, F25. And then I already forgot it. 525 F7F. F. Okay, so that makes them slightly grayish -y, like a purpley gray. And then I'm going to select the anchor tags inside of the cards section. So anchor tags in there. I'm going to give them a different color, which is 6772E5. So 6772E5. It's a purpley color. Then I'm going to give them a font weight of 400. And I'm going to get rid of text decoration. So we don't get that underline. Text decoration, none. Okay. And let's compare that to the final result. That looks about right. So another thing that I'll do, it's hard to notice here, but there's a left border. Well, there's a divider, which is just the left border on this element. Um, so I'm going to add that in. And that's easy enough to do. I just need to select that one card. So it's the second section within the cards. So I'll do cards, section, and then I could just give it an ID, but I'll do nth of type two. And then I'm going to set a border left of one pixel solid. Let's just go with black first. Okay, there's that. But the actual color I want is this one right here, which we use for the background color of the main. So I'm going to put that there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's just a nice little touch. A slight border there. Um, and then we should probably remove that when they stack. I mean, you're not going to be able to see it really, but I would rather add a top border to that element instead so that we have that divider still there. It's just now on the top. So I'm going to copy that color again. All right. And actually, I'll just copy this entire selector go down to when we make them in a column right here, 900 pixels. Take that second section in the cards div, set border left to now be none, and then set border top to be one pixel solid F6, F9, FC. So there we go. It's a little bit hard to see. Maybe I'll go with two pixels so you can see it a bit better. Man, that doesn't help a whole lot either. How about eight pixels? All right, so there it's on the top of this element here. Uh, but if we go back to this size, we have that thin left border. So another use or another thing that we've changed thanks to our breakpoint, we can move those borders or show and hide a certain border uh, based off of the screen size. And then the very last piece is this H2 here, which honestly is kind of forgettable. But if we wanted to make it resize, um, we could do that as well. I don't know. I kind of just want to get rid of it to be blunt. But let's go ahead and do it. It is an H2, and it's inside of our main. I guess I'll just do all H2s. Maybe I'll just do main H2. There's only one on the page. I'm going to give it this purplish color that we use for the anchor tags. Then I'll increase its font size. So font size will be 2Ms. And then font weights, I think I went with 300. So a little bit thinner. And then I set a margin top of 2Ms as well. So there it is, it looks fine. But then once we get to smaller screen sizes, like right about here at, what are we, 500 something pixels, it's a bit cramped. And then that happens. So to fix that, we'll just resize it. And I think we can just recycle one of our breakpoints. We could just do this here. Let's see how it looks if we use the 500. Or maybe we'll use a 700. Let's go, uh, we want the H2 instead of main, font size will be maybe 1.5 M's. Let's see what that looks like. 
So we're good, we're good. Resize, and then mobile, we would need to resize again. So we could use VHs or VWs. The, the problem with using those units is that something will look good on one size, and then as you scale, it starts to get way too large or way too small. Using a percentage of the viewport height or width can be tricky for smaller things. So I'm not gonna do that right now. But I think I'll just go with font size 1.5 M's here. And then once we get to 500 pixels and below, I'll set it maybe to 1.2. Let's see how that looks. And now we're at like a iPhone size right about there. Yeah, I think that's fine enough. So now let's view our finished website here, a responsive site. Uh, I'm just gonna set this to be responsive now and increase the size here. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look at a iPhone X. Looks pretty good, not too shabby. And uh, you know, we might wanna change some of the padding here. It's a little, or maybe the font size of the paragraph. It's a little narrow, but I'm not gonna bother right now. Let's look at a different one, different iPhone. It's pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's decent enough. Makes me wanna buy a cactus, especially if they look like that. Beautiful cactus. So now it's time for an exercise if you're up for it. Here's a nav bar I would like for you to create. This is the starter version, it's just HTML. And then I tell you the two breakpoints that you'll need to use, at least if you wanna recreate exactly what I have here, which for the record uh, is not a nav bar I actually created. I took this from A. James Liptix, Liptax code pen. It's simple, but it also looks pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't involve any JavaScript. So this is what it looks like here. Uh, on full size or on large screen sizes above 990 pixels. And then as I resize, you'll see that the space in here shrinks. So you'll need to know Flexbox. And then there at 990, we end up with the links going below the brand. So now the brand stacks on top of the links. And then as I shrink even further down to 600 pixels, all of the links then stack on top of one another. Um, you don't have to worry about this hover here. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting everything exactly right, the, the letter spacing and all of that. But just focus on the actual shape of the nav bar, the behavior at these different breakpoints. The links all on the right, not a ton of spacing between them. And then shrink down here. Now the links take up their own line here and there's more spacing between them. And then the brand goes on top. And then eventually those links stack. One last thing, if you wanna really be extra detailed, there's no border bottom. So all of these have a border bottom on them, except for the very last one. So remove the border from the very bottom one. So just to reiterate, this is coming from someone else's code pen. I don't wanna take credit for their work, but we're gonna use it. It is code pen, it's kind of the point of code pen after all. Here's a starter code. I added some borders just to make it a little easier for you to see what's going on. So we've got two elements in this main nav bar. We have the brand and then the links over here. And then as I shrink this down, you'll see that, uh, there we go, those links go to their own line and now there's spacing between. So it's the same one element, it's just taking up more space here than it was up top. And then as we shrink down a little bit more, you'll see that that element now is still there, but now things are going vertically. So you'll need to use Flexbox and you'll need to use media queries. So that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, or at least maybe learned something. Uh, please consider liking it, leaving comments, subscribing if you haven't already. And then one more time, for those of you who are interested in changing careers or becoming a software engineer and you're ready to take it seriously, take a look at my job guaranteed bootcamp. Take it at home from the comfort and safety of your sofa. Do it part-time, do it full-time. Learn JavaScript and Python and Node and React and Redux and a whole bunch of other tools. You get partnered up with a senior engineer who mentors you every single week. You have access to live help and debugging whenever you need it. We also have office hours every week and, and presentations every week on different interesting topics. We have engineers come in and talk to you. We have mock interviews. We have projects you have to complete, including a couple big capstone projects. There's a lot. I could keep talking about it, but I'm not. Probably the most important part, though, is that if you don't get a job, then you don't pay anything. So that's it. It's at the end of the video. I think it's okay for me to go on a bit about it at the end. I hope you're all staying safe and sane. I'll see you later this week with another video. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to just slowly back away from the microphone and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Are you still there? Okay, I'm, I'm leaving. Yep. No, I'm, I'm gone.